Now let's talk about surveillance objectives. To determine the appropriate devices for a given surveillance situation, you must consider the surveillance objective. Depending on the situation, you'll want to have specific levels of image quality, which usually include the following. Overview, general surveillance, recognition, and identification. A wide scene overview is intended for situational awareness only. Objects like vehicles may be recognized, although make, model, may not always be safely identified. As you can see from the image, the image quality is not sufficient to see detailed behavior of smaller objects. Also, it's impossible to recognize any personal features of the individual in the image. A general surveillance objective provides a scene overview that offers situational awareness with reasonable detail for following a situation. It is possible to view the behavior of individuals, but neither recognition nor identification of persons is possible. Vehicle make model may be safely identified. A recognition objective provides an image in which a person is identifiable by someone familiar with that person, but not necessarily by someone unfamiliar with that individual. An identification objective provides an image in which a person is safely identifiable by someone unfamiliar with that individual. Personal details like glasses, jewelry, and tattoos are usually identifiable. Let's move on to resolution. Many different resolutions exist, but the overall principle is the same. Resolution is the horizontal number of pixels multiplied by the vertical number of pixels on the camera's image sensor. For example, the video graphics array, VGA resolution highlighted here, has 640 by 480 pixels for a total pixel count of 307,200. Images with more than 1 million pixels are considered to be megapixel resolutions. This greater resolution can capture more details, but that does not always result in a higher quality image. Lighting and lens quality can affect the capture. Bandwidth and compression can also reduce the quality. The best resolution is one that meets your needs and no more. There is no reason to process, transmit, and store pixels you never use. Another variable to consider is the distance from the camera to the subject. As you can see from the example here, the distance from the camera to the subject is not the same as the distance from the subject to a spot below where the camera is mounted. For that reason, you must also account for the height of the camera to determine the true distance from the camera to the subject. Here's how to do the calculation. To calculate the actual distance from the camera to the subject of that camera, you must use a variation of the Pythagorean theorem. C equals the square root of A squared plus B squared. For example, if the distance from a ceiling mounted camera is 20 feet, A, and the height of the camera is 10 feet, B, this gives us the result of a squared 400 plus b squared 100 equals c squared 500. The square root of 500 is approximately 22 feet, which is the correct distance from the camera to the subject. You can use the milestone lens calculator to determine how far away to place the camera in order to capture a specific scene. Using this calculator, enter any two variables in order to calculate the remaining variables. Variables include the following height, width, distance between camera and scene, and focal length of the lens. You just learned about camera fundamentals, including surveillance objectives, standard resolutions, and optical properties. Visit our YouTube site to view other tutorials in this playlist.